Okay guys, this is a video that I've been meaning to make for some time and maybe I've may tried to make it in the past, but today we're going to be taking on the YouTube bushcrafting knife. Now I've already talked at length about the bushcrafting scene for knife makers and YouTube and I've talked about how flooded the market is with excellent knives. Many of the knives out there that you see will serve you very well, whether they're a CRK Pacific, like I've shown in the past, the LT Wright Legome, the Battle Horse Knives uh, Battle Lore, or many others. Even the Raymier's Bush Lore is an amazing knife. So there's, so there's many knives to choose from, so many options, truly the market is flooded, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, because it's always good to have many options because a knife that works for me may not work for you or a knife that works for you may not work for me. So options are good. However, what I want to specifically address in this video isn't the good bushcrafting knives or the good survival knives. It's the bad ones. So what do I mean by this and what do I mean by YouTube bush knives or bushcrafting knives? I mean that many over the course of the years and I think it's now going on close to 15 years of YouTube, it's been an amazing time and I've loved every minute of my part of it. However, there have been many YouTube bushcrafters and survivalists that have come and gone and some are still around to this day that invent their own bushcrafting knives or survival knives after their copious amounts of years or months or weeks or days in the field learning and you know becoming the best zen enlightened bushcrafter and they come out with this really cool really awesome neat bushcrafting knife and it's not that great now, I don't mean to discredit people, and there are certain bushcrafters, I won't name names, out there that do truly have a lot of experience. There are YouTubing bushcrafters that go out for week, days, weeks, months, and truly practice survival. And to a certain degree, some of them that do go on to make their own knives do pretty good jobs. And I look at these knives and say, I wouldn't personally buy it, but I could see how you would use that in a bushcrafting situation to get a lot of work done. However, there are survivalists and bushcrafters out there, once again, not mentioning names, that come out with truly poor designs. Things that make me honestly wonder if they're just cheap money grabs, or maybe not so much cheap because some of them cost upwards of $200, but just straight up money grabs, things trying to get your attention and get your dollars. And while I can't necessarily see their financials or see what agreements they've made with knife companies, I can certainly tell that these are not the types of knives that you want to use for bushcrafting or survival for that matter. Some of them are great thought exercises and some of them are great wall hangers, but truly we need to be careful and we need to be realistic about the types of knives that we go for as bushcrafters and survivalists. Now, if you've been around the channel a little bit, you'll know that I do like some of the more wild designs. I do have a Tom Brown Tracker by Topps, which many would consider to be a crazy, stupid designed knife that's not really a survival knife. However, when we approach bushcrafting knives, we do want to look, bushcrafting or survival knives, we want to look at the usefulness, the cost, and overall how the blade is designed, and most importantly, the biggest distinguishing factor is how is it being sold. Many of the knives that come out by these supposed bushcraft masters or zen enlightened, you know, the best bushcrafter you'll ever meet kind of people, try to hype them up as one tool options, or they try to hype them up as having many different features, things such as glass breakers, or you know, bullet pullers or things like gut hooks, things such as those that are all these kinds of weird, cool, neat features. And ultimately, what these features are led to do from a marketing standpoint is grab your attention. When you see a knife that has all these different features, it's designed to get your attention. However, we have to draw back to very simple designs very homogenous designs. I've been talking about it a lot on this outing of taking a look at knives such as the LT Wright Legome. It is a very homogenous blade. You don't see a lot of cool, neat features for its price point, but it comes down to the fact that when you see a knife that's very basic, 
that's very bland looking. The knife is actually designed to be the most useful for you. When you have knives that have you know, fancy finger choils or different grips etched or created into the blade or its handle, it causes the blade to, one, become structurally unsound, as we've seen with knives such as the Buck Hoodlum. We've also seen it to, it can also create hot spots and pain to the user trying to use it. So when we look at bushcrafting knives and when you're trying to distinguish something that you truly want to buy, whether it's endorsed by a bushcrafter on YouTube or in a magazine, or it's not at all, what you want to take a look at is knives that are very homogenous and very non-built on hype. If a knife is built up on hype, where it's using some special amazing steel that's the best thing ever, you should be concerned. Because when people try to hype up knives, not so much on their steel, but on their design and on their features, and I mean this in design, I mean things that are really hip or really trendy, it usually means that there's a lack of intelligence in the design, and it usually means that the creator knows that it won't be sold on its own merit. It has to have cool features to draw you in to buy it. There's some knives out there more than others that show this, and not every bushcrafter on YouTube has made these types of knives, but when you look at a true one tool option, which they can exist as a one knife option, you don't want a knife that has all kinds of cool features, you know, that has a sharpened top edge. I mean, if these things do work for you, great, but these won't work for the majority of individuals out there trying to practice and learn bushcrafting. These are, you know, elements built to create hype and built to help sell a tool that's poorly designed and made by people who don't exactly know what they're talking about. So anyways, guys, Hopefully this helps, and as always, God bless, and I'm out.